Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. Uh, today we're going to actually look at the uh, types of rocks with our emphasis on the igneous and sedimentary rocks. Now you may say we have done this in grade 10 uh, and we are doing it again. Yes, I think it's necessary to actually revise over sedimentary and igneous rocks before we look at the uh, horizontal strata, the inclined strata, and massive igneous rock strata. All right, because we need to have the background information in order to understand those processes. So this is basically a revision of your grade 10 work. I've also included things like significance. Okay, so we're going to look at the structure and the characteristics of these two rocks or types of rocks that's going to assist us with those other sections. Okay, so many of you know it already, all right, because you've learned your grade in 10 geography well. Okay, so it's just a matter of revision. Okay, so let's get going with this. All right. Now, in this section, we're going to look at both rocks again. Let me get my highlighter. All right. We're going to look at the both types of rocks, sedimentary and igneous rocks, and we're going to look at their formation and characteristics. Okay, remember, this is necessary, okay, for understanding horizontal, inclined, and massive igneous rocks. Okay, so let's start. We've done it in grade 10. We know how... Uh, sedimentary rocks form. First thing is about erosion, okay, which occurs, okay, and what actually happens, the sediments end up in water and they begin to settle. That's your sedimentation. And of course, you must remember the erosion is a continuous process. So what happens next? Wood time more layers pile up. So you have the first layer here. Can you see it? But as more erosion occurs and sediments get deposited, another layer forms. Can you see it? Okay. And they press down on the lower layers. So what happens is when this layer presses down on that layer, it becomes more compact, more solid, more compact. All right, and that's what we call the process of compaction. Same thing you did in grade 10, eh? And then more layers and further compaction happens, which forces out the water of the layers. All right, so as more compact, more compact, whatever humidity or water is in the layers now actually is forced out. It becomes more compact and solid. Right, salt crystals glue the layers together. All right, the crystals that's found there actually solidify and glue the layers together so they become one rock with many layers. All right, so that's known as cementation. And eventually, your sedimentary rock is formed. You just get it, you don't get all loose layers. There's compact cementation happening with the salt crystals that's in there and it solidifies it and it becomes one rock. That's your sedimentary rock. Okay. As you've done last year, as I mentioned. Okay. Now, so let's look at the overall aspects of it. All right. It's formed by erosion. We know. I'm going to keep repeating it in my slides so we'll reinforce the idea. Okay, and I'm going to go back. I've always done this <laughs> when I move my fingers too fast. Okay, from erosion. And then sediments are moved from one place to another. Remember, erosion will take it from the land and deposit it into the water. 
All right, sediments are deposited in layers. Okay, remember we said that the first layer, further erosion, another layer with the older ones at the bottom. All right, and as they become compacted and cemented together, they form the rocks, which is your sedimentary rocks. All right, now, in between these layers of rock, there is a bedding plane. All right, what is a bedding plane? It is the surface that separates one layer of compressed rock from the next layer of compressed rock. Okay, that's why you can see it is found between the layers, all right, of the rocks. That's your bedding plane. Something for you to know also, which is important. All right, you can see a picture here. Can you see the layers? There's another layer. There's another layer. And this is your sedimentary rocks. And in between the sedimentary rocks, there is your bedding plane. Okay. Right. Now, I'm showing you another picture. Because what I want to show you here is that, yeah, there's larger layers. Okay. Right. There's thicker layers. And here, there's thinner layers. So, we can get layers that vary in size, all right? Sometimes it's harder to see the layers. Sometimes it's easier when they're bigger. So they vary in size, eh? Just remember that, all right? Now, again, some other characteristics and some I'm repeating, they are the most common rocks that are found, okay? Next one, they usually form underwater. Let me move my face a bit underwater remember they usually form not always but they usually form and that's the main characteristic okay? all right as sediments get deposited a layer forms in the water and the next layer forms in the water all right they may contain fossils all right as the sediments form uh, animals die plants and they all get part of that rock which becomes compressed and as you dig up rocks like this, you may find fossils. And another thing here is that they form in layers of strata. Okay? Layers of strata. All right? Uh, my hands are very fidgety today because it's getting small and big. All right? I do apologize for that. And the sediments are key to the past okay because you can find fossils it tells us about the past you must know the dinosaur fossils and whatever fossils that were there in the past we can learn more about it just giving you an example all right let's go to the next slide igneous rocks now their formation is different when you do volcanism or some people say volcanism you will learn that magma is found below the surface of the earth and as it comes to the surface it's known as lava all right as you've done in the past you've learned this okay but you must know that as this magma moves it also receives it reaches temperatures where it will cool okay it will cool down and it will solidify and therefore various features will form within the ground but when that solidifies it becomes igneous rock all right so obviously around it can you see all the layers all the layers around it that is your sedimentary rock which you learned last year is considered to be softer it'll vary in resistance obviously all right uh, but it's considered soft and in, as this gets eroded the solidified magma here gets exposed to the surface as igneous rocks okay that's one way in which igneous rocks will form okay the cooling of the 
magma. All right. Now, let's look at another thing. The volcanoes. When they erupt, can you see this volcano erupting here? It's coming out in all directions. And as it reaches the surface, it will cool also. And as it cools, it solidifies and will form igneous rocks. So if you look at it, it can be formed below the surface as magma cools, and it's been formed above the surface as lava cools when it comes through a volcano. All right. So it cools and crystallizes. All right. Crystallizes. Lots of crystalline texture in the igneous rock. All right. And I'm going to the next slide. So some characteristics of this rock. All right. One of them you would have seen is that it has no fossils. No fossils. Okay. In this rock. It's crystals, minerals, etc. that solidify, but fossils are not found in. It has no layering, no layers. You remember sedimentary rocks have different layers. Igneous rocks have no layers, all right? Usually made up of two or more minerals that are found in this type of rock, okay? Good, solid minerals. It may vary in color also. It may be light or dark colored, all right? Usually made up of mineral crystals of different sizes, okay? different sizes of mineral crystals, as you've learned last year, okay? And then it has uniform resistance. If it's, it's a hard rock and it's a hard rock throughout, you don't get soft, hard, soft, hard. The resistance is the same across the rock. Whereas with sedimentary rocks, the resistance can vary from hard to soft, hard to soft. Yeah, it stays the same. All right, you have same hardness across the rock. Is that clear, learners? Then it also experiences exfoliation. All right, when it's released, all right, you find various processes involved, weathering, etc. Of course, we're not going to go into detail on this now, all right, but we're going to significant fact of exfoliation happening where layers actually peel off from there. We always use the onion when we teach this, but please don't write the onion in your exams, all right? Where like it has different layers just peeling off like how you peel off an onion due to exfoliation. We're more focusing on what you need to know uh, for grade 11. Of course, you went into more depth in grade 10, okay? Right, oh, let's go on. Can you see the exfoliation happening here? Well, layers are coming out or peeling off. Pieces of the rock are peeling off. I shouldn't be using the word layers. They're peeling off. Can you see it's a solid piece of rock, but layers peeling off down there, right? Look at this. This is your pile rock. All right, huge. It most probably is a battle that came through. You understand, a battle has come through, I shouldn't say most huge, most relatively, it is a battle that comes through. You understand, in this massive rock here that has been exposed, the softer rock around it has been eroded, and now we find this being exposed as a huge dome. Later on, you'll be coming across these features. You can see the resistance is the same across the rock. No layers, nothing of that sort, okay? It's just a solid, resistant piece of rock, all right? That is your igneous rock, all right? Some examples, yeah. Uh, learners, you don't need to get into detail about this. I just thought out of interest, Maybe you can identify these rocks when you see them. All right, different names, basalt, diorite, gabbro, granite. Uh, you don't need to worry, all right? You're not the geologist, 
Okay, so just some examples to show you this. It's interesting looking at rocks. I also have my own little rock collection that I go around. I don't damage the environment. You understand? But if I get a piece, it's fine. Okay, right. Those are your rocks. Okay. Now, I just gave you a little exercise on this. Okay. Uh, looking at this figure that I have in front of me. And if we look at it. Right. There's two rocks here. It says refer to figure one which has A and B, okay? And of course, it's showing us two different types of rocks here. One, we clearly see the layers. Can you see it? With its bedding planes in between. So we know that this is our sedimentary rock, okay? Uh, this we see solid. We don't see any layers. Can you see? In fact, I'm being naughty. I'm creating little layers there now, which I shouldn't. All right. So this is our igneous rock. Remember, there is another type, metamorphic, but that's not relevant to us in grade 11. All right. We're just focusing on these two types. So we picked it up already. All the information that we uh, learned so far will come through. Some simple questions. All right, just to get your mind thinking, it's always important to have it. All right. And let's look at the questions. Identify rock types A and B. And you've already looked at it. If I go back, A is sedimentary and B is igneous rocks. All right. Explain the formation of rock types A and B. You know sedimentary rock is A, and you've already picked up from what we've discussed that erosion occurs, and then sediments get deposited into the water at the bottom, and it forms a layer. As further erosion occurs, more sediments get deposited, all right, and forming another layer, the bottom layer gets compact, and as more erosion occurs, Further layer forms, more compact happens, dation happens, all right? Uh, you can go through the, the notes again. And as this happens, the rock, then the, whatever water is there gets forced out. And we have our compact layers of rock forming your sedimentary rock, all right? Uh, very simple. You just go back, you get your notes, and you work through it. All right. I can show you this very quickly again when we went back to those slides. All right. And there we are. All the processes of cementation, compaction, all right, and then how compaction occurs. Uh, sedimentation rather, compaction, and then cementation, which forms the rock. Okay. Let's get back to our questions. I just want to show you the slide in which it was. Okay. Then B, obviously, you've learned that it can occur below the surface when magma moves and as it cools, it solidifies to form your igneous rock. And as you learned all those features before, it takes different shapes, different sizes, your battle it will cool, forming a huge structure of igneous rock. Your sill will form a horizontal rock. Your sill at your dike will form a, a rock at an angle. All right. So various types of rocks will form as the magma cools but we also learned that it comes out the magma comes out as lava through volcanoes it will also cool okay forming on the surface with the magma the softer rock gets eroded and therefore it gets exposed to the surface as igneous rocks but it's all a cooling process below the surface and above the surface all right so let's look at that sketch again or that little information that I gave you, right?
Can you see it here? This is the slide that we use for that with regards to the magma and the lava cooling. Okay, let's go to another question. State three differences between rock type A and B. One, obviously, A has layers, B doesn't have layers. All right, B doesn't have layers. A has fossils, B doesn't have fossils. So A, which is your sedimentary rocks, has fossils. Igneous rocks does not have fossils. Sedimentary rocks layers, igneous rocks no layers. Sedimentary rocks does not necessarily have to have uniform resistance, can be soft and hard, all right? Whereas your igneous rocks have uniform resistance. So three things, layers, no layers, fossils, no fossils, and of course, uniform resistance with igneous, sedimentary, not uniform resistance, not necessarily. All right, now it says A can be both horizontal and inclined strata. Okay, give reasons to support the statement. So when the sedimentary rocks fall, ah, my line is not the best, I do apologize. Okay, it's straight. I do generally with a ruler, I can do it, and my age is on my side, but imagine all this without no bends but a straight line, ah, that's much better. And there's another layer, okay, that's straight. Okay, let's look, focus on this. So it can be horizontal as it forms. But what happens when it goes, undergoes folding, all right? We may have something like this. And let's create another layer there. Now, isn't through the folding, there is inclined strata. All right, so we have to think beyond that also. All right, certain questions can just pop up like that. It gives you a better understanding of how this can be horizontal and it can be inclined. All right, now I just spoke about A, which is sedimentary. Remember, what your Igneous rocks, you can have the same thing. A dike can have a slight inclination. You understand? A cell can be horizontal. You understand? Uh, a battle, it can be dome-shaped. So, but I just focused on this. And this is where you actually visualize this. And all this is going to help you when you're doing inclined and you're doing uh, your horizontal strata and your inclined strata and you're going to do your massive uh, igneous rock stratas that will come now as you go through your sections. All right. Okay, learners, just a brief thing on the rocks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Till our next lesson. All the best. Bye.